All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. Uh, I've got most everything that I need to get caught up on caught up, and I'm going through my pile of stuff that I have picked up over the past few months and put in my project to be pile. And basically, guys, that's a little pile of things that when I'm at you know, Hobby Lobby or just scrolling through Facebook or uh, Amazon or somewhere, and I see a little cheap something that I think, oh, wow, I could make something cool out of that. Well, I usually buy them and put them over there on that shelf, and that's where they sit until I get time to where I can actually design and build and create whatever it is that I've been wanting to create. <clears throat> and tonight, I've got a little device that I am going to see if I can't make something cool out of. And what it is, is I've bought a little clock kit, and this is just the motor for the clock. And what I wanna do is I wanna make a fully you know, laser built clock to go with this. You can customize it, you can put whatever you want for the numbers, you can decorate it however you want. And I wanna make it so that you guys out there, maybe you just got your laser, got it open for Christmas. If so, congratulations. <laughs> maybe this is something that you might wanna to try to do. So what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be another one of my computer slash video videos. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some easy steps using some free resources and just basic light burn tools that you can use to make yourself a clock. All you got to buy is one of these little guys here with the arms that go with it and uh, put that thing together and make yourself a clock. So if that's something you're interested in or an idea that you might like to try, stick around and we're going to go through the process. All right, guys, <clears throat> this is going to be take two of the process of creating this clock. Uh, the video that I did out in the shop didn't turn out that great. Had some audio issues, so we're going to try it inside the house here on my other computer. Uh, the first part of this uh, build, of course, is going to be to get the frame. And unless you really want to sit down and just do a lot of work for this project, easiest way, go to boxes.py and uh, just go down here to the simple box. All right, for this build, what we're going to want is basically kind of like a little shadow box or, you know, just a three-sided box uh, with an open back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 200 by 200 box. And since I'm doing a retake here, guys, I'm just going to put in 35. I'm pretty sure that's what I used outside for the height. Now, even though this says X, Y, and height, it's technically not the height. If it's on a wall, that's going to be basically your thickness. It's going to be 200 wide, 200 tall, and then 35 thick. Uh, this little mark here basically tells it whether you want that the inside or the outside dimensions. This application, that is not really going to matter. Uh, I typically just run the parallel finger holes. That's, I mean, those are kind of default. The material that I'll be using is going to be five millimeter thick. Uh, I want this file to be in a light burn file. No need for labels <clears throat> and no need for reference. If you put a zero here, as it says here, it will disable the reference so you won't have to deal with that to delete it or whatever. Now, this number here, guys, this is going to be your curve. All right, the, the smaller this number, the looser the fit, the tighter, the, the bigger the number, the tighter the fit. So typically what I do on something that I want to like put together uh, to where I do not have to use glue is I'll run it to 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. I'm gonna go ahead and run this one up to 0 0.4, which is gonna make it very snug. Uh, but once we put this thing together, it is not gonna fall apart. So then all you gotta do is go down here and hit the generate button and it's going to generate this file you'll see it pop up down here in your downloads uh, once that thing is downloaded you're pretty much free to leave your browser and go into lightburn all right guys once you get into lightburn <clears throat> you're going to want to open that file just go to file open and uh on that box it's going to uh open it up show you the notes you can just disregard that and there you go uh, once you get in here, I like to go ahead and change everything to my cut file and assign 
the speeds that I want. Okay, I'm going to be running this one at 6 millimeters a second, 100% output, and I want that at one pass. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just have that set right there like that. Uh, the next part of this design is simply a circle. Now, this is a redo, so I don't remember exactly what my measurements were earlier when I did the video, but I'm wanting to say it was 5 millimeters. So for the sake of the video, we're going to go with a 5 millimeter circle. And once you get the circle built, make sure that uh, make sure that you lock it back so that it doesn't get skewed or moved or anything. Uh, all you got to do is click the circle, click the outer shell of the piece that you want it to be on, and then hit the bullseye button. That's going to position that directly in the center. All right. Uh, the way that I did the other one is I took and put my logo in the middle of it. Uh, this is, you know, whatever you decide that you want to put. But once you drop your artwork in there, just hold down the control button, click on the outer edge. Once again, use the bullseye function to put it in the center. Uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change this to a fill. I'm going to set the appropriate settings for the 20 watt, which is what I used to cut it out, which is the X-Tool 20 watt. And then once you get that, I've got the logo in there. Okay, you can't see it because it's covered up, but if you hide this, there's the little hole. So the hole's going to be in the middle, and it's going to it's going going to cut this part of the material out. So that's where the clock legs and stuff are going to go. Now, to do the numbers, uh, you could actually stick this to it, make this text stick to a line. And do it that way. From my experience, the spacing is a nightmare. Uh, I do not recommend doing that. Uh, this circle here, I'm going to change that circle to around 160 millimeters. Uh, this is using a tool line, and all this is going to be is a reference for me to use to manually put the text in. I've, like I said, I've tried this with uh, trying to use text spacing, and, and it's just it's a pain. So. Take my advice, just manually insert those and save yourself some headache. Uh, because when you start trying to align the text on here, getting the space incorrect is just a nightmare. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to use the standard font. And I'm going to click and I'm going to put my, my numbers in. Uh, of course, I'm going to want those to be an engrave. So I'm going to change that font. I'm going to go ahead and make this circle here a little bigger so that we can... Uh, There we go. This circle is going to be my outer boundary of where I don't want my text to go past that. To try to give this thing some symmetry and so that it looks round. Uh, so I'm going to take, move my text up to the point to where I get it almost on that line right there. With the text selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the outside line here. And I'm going to be using the center function. And I'm going to align it. So that I know all of my stuff is lined up through the, the center of this build. Uh, same thing all the way around. You're going to go over here. Three. Very similar process. I'm going to zoom in here and make sure I've got the three right on the edge, but not not over it. I'm just using that as kind of a you know a, a, an alignment aid. Select the outer. Uh, part of the design and then I'm going to use the horizontal alignment to make sure that it's in the center and pretty much repeat and rinse repeat and rinse all the way around until you get the entire thing built out and then of course once you get the design built the only other step that there is left to go is to add some materials to your machine and send it so I'm going to take the sixes like I said just use that little uh, circle to kind of oh, click the wrong one, use that little circle to kind of align everything. And you're going to use these tools here, whichever direction it needs to be aligned to. Just go ahead and and go around. Uh, and I'll do this. I'll do the nine, and we'll we'll y'all get the picture from there. Spacing. You'll have to figure out your spacing. Um, get my nine over there next to the edge, and then I'm going to hold Control. Select the outer piece, and I'm going to use horizontal alignment to make sure that those guys are right. 
Hey guys, so I got some material loaded in here. This is gonna be my little 4.5, which in this case is actually closer to five millimeter Luon. And I've got that loaded in the 20 watt X tool. I've got the file that we just built up in the workspace and I'm just gonna home my machine first just to make sure that everything is working as it should be. Once I get it homed, I'm gonna go ahead and frame the workspace and just verify that the camera is accurate and make sure that there's no you know, imperfections on the material that I wanna avoid or anything like that. So, letting that run. Once it, uh, once it frames, then I'm gonna adjust my focus. Focus should be right because I've been cutting this material this week, but we're gonna go ahead and just double check it to be sure. Uh, this piece of material's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve to it, so hopefully that won't be a big problem. Uh, I will be running air assist, uh, not 100%, but probably about half value on my air assist just to make sure that the cut goes well and I do get a nice deep engrave on the uh, text. Moving over to the cuts, I'm gonna take and select the feel and I'm moving that all the way to the top so that the engrave goes first and then after the engrave goes, then the machine can come back and cut everything out, cut all the pieces out. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid, turn on the vacuum and here we go. Uh, hopefully this won't take too long. I'm running at 100% output at 100 millimeters per second. So shouldn't be a really long burn, but it will take a few minutes. So we'll check back. All right, guys, I got all the pieces cut out. Got them moved over to the table here. Uh, with this kit, I actually bought a different set of hands than the ones that came with the little motor. So those are the ones I'll be using for that. Uh, I've got all my little pieces here to be able to put this together and make the box that I'm wanting. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking my sander and just touch it up on the, uh, the image. I do run air assist on all my burns. Uh, I know a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't, but I do because I don't mind sanding it and I get a lot deeper, better looking burn in my opinion. So I'm gonna be touching these pieces up with the sander. And firm believer in compressed air too, guys. And see, so you get a nice, nice, nice finish on that. So there we go, got that part done. So as far as the box goes, this is a simple box. Like I said, you just take these little pieces here, go together, they go onto this box. And so the two things that you're gonna wanna make sure of is you're gonna have two different sets of pieces. You're gonna have the tabs and then you're gonna have the holes. Uh, it really, usually, I'll make sure it doesn't, but it usually doesn't matter which part goes on which side as long as they're opposing each other. And if you remember, I did set this one to be a very tight fit in the settings. Uh, and the reason is, is because I want this to basically be to where I can put it together and take it apart. So, I'm gonna have to kind of persuade this one a little bit, but I didn't want to have to glue this guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the other part that's opposite of the one that has the tab, and I'm just gonna set it up here on the top and uh, make sure I got it lined up where it needs to be. And I'm just gonna kind of tap it with this little rubber mallet to get all the pieces to lock together. Uh, and I, like I said, you could do this with less tolerances and glue it, but I just decided I wanted this one to be nice and tight without any glue. I'm just gonna bump those until you get it completely flush. So those two pieces are on there, and, and guys, they are on there. Uh, setting those tight tolerances like that. There's no glue required for this guy. It'll stay together just like it is. Uh, then you take the other two pieces, I'm just gonna take them, and they're gonna line up with the, the notches in the ends and the notches here. So same kind of principle. I'm gonna make sure I get everything lined up to where it needs to be. And I'm just gonna kind of bump it to get everything to snap together. I actually may have went a little too tight for my liking, but it's, it's working out. Got that one on. 
Uh, this one is going to be the the last piece to kind of give this thing a little more rigidness. Uh, once you get these things popped together, it's not going to go anywhere. And there we have it. Like I said, it is it's together. It is not going to move. It's not going anywhere. So once you get those locked together, the only part that's left is to take your little, you got to have your little motor here. And you're basically going to just put this guy through the hole that's in the middle of your design. We'll slide that guy on there. Like I said, just pressing it into position. It doesn't have to be really, really tight. And then I'm going to take the second one, which is the, actually the longer hand goes on second. This one does have a slot that you've got to make sure you get it lined up with because it has to sync up with the way that the clock works. So there's a little slot in there that's got to be lined up. It's kind of hard to see. Then I've got a little nut that screws onto this guy here to hold that one in place and it's just going to be finger tight and then the second hand kind of snaps in on top of that just press it in so i've gotten the uh got the hands all on there now let me see if i can use the little time set to uh to rotate it so it is 357 here. So I'm gonna roll this guy on around. Just make sure the hands don't hit because you can bend those or get those out of whack. Uh, so we got about 357. Let me grab a battery. There we go. So now I've got my little clock put together. I was wanting to use the black uh, arms, but hindsight, I think the gold ones actually look pretty good. So I've got it set for the, the current time, which is 3.58, and uh, it's keeping time. As far as the back of the box, guys, you've got this little, uh, this little piece right here uh, that if you were wanting to put, you know, hanging on the wall using a, a little tack or one of the uh, command strips or whatever, you could just put one of those command strips up there, and when you hang the clock on the wall, everything is going to be concealed behind the box. So there you go, a little quick project. If you, uh, if you want to try one of these with your laser, if you just got it, you want to make something cool, uh, you can put your business logo, you can put uh, text, whatever, uh, any, anything you can imagine. And the cool thing about this is I can actually redo this and reuse that clock and make it into any other, any other design or whatever I want to do. Uh, you can stain this wood. You could uh, come back over, spray it with some polyurethane just to seal it if you wanted. Like I said, I'm just kind of, this is just kind of a demonstration, so that's what we're doing. All right, guys, that's going to be my clock build for today. Uh, picked this thing up. Like I said, I grabbed it a while back, and I had been wanting to try out making one of these guys, but I just never got around to it with Christmas coming up, you know, approaching. Been staying really, really busy, and uh, I just thought this might be some good content for some of you guys. Like I said, if you just opened your laser, you got it for Christmas or whatever, and you, you, you want a project that you can make rather easy, with very little overhead, this might be for you. Uh, I'll sh take and uh, drop a link for some of the little clock motors uh, in the description. And uh, like I said, other than that, your material using this process, if you go to boxes.py and you build this box the way that I showed you, it, it really is not material specific. The only limitation is gonna be the length of the the arm that comes out from the clock face, you're gonna make you need to make sure it's at least long enough to where you can get those uh, hands on there and get that nut on there to hold that thing in place. So take those steps, you know, lay out your material, build your box and put it together. Really no tools required other than, you know, sandpaper or sander. Uh, if you do run air assist like I do, then you're gonna to wanna to sand it a little bit possibly. But uh, there you go. All right, guys, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for uh, taking the time to watch the video. And if you made it to this point, then obviously you found some use in the video. Uh, 
be sure to hit that subscribe button. I try to put out content and help guys out that have lasers. If maybe you're looking for ideas, uh, something to do with your business, uh, little things that you could sell, make a little money off your hobby, whatever. You know, these things, this is cheap, this is easy, and it's not something that folks can run out to Hobby Lobby and pick up. This is a very, very customizable piece here. Uh, you, could, you could do this with any type of material, whether it be acrylic or whatnot. Uh, you could make a clock like this out of acrylic. You could use the same design using acrylic and cut the numbers out using the stencil function. And you could even put a backlight behind there. And that way, you know, the light would, would shine through the acrylic and kind of have it that, that, you know, neon sign look or whatnot. There's a lot of different variations. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, laser engravers kind of open up a whole world of possibilities for you. Uh, and if you're not aware of it already, uh, myself and Steve from over at Ventari's Workshop, we started doing a weekly uh, Q&A, uh, just talking, hanging out, just laser stuff with a bunch of guys, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, uh, right here on my channel, or you can come in through Ventari's channel. But either way, guys, we're going to be here. If you have questions, you're new to the hobby, looking for ideas, just want to give us some feedback, whatever. We'd be more than happy to have you join us. But if that's something that interests you, be sure to stick that on your calendar. You can go over to my lives and uh, add that and go ahead and let me know that you're coming and it'll notify you when the live begins and you can come join us and, and hang out with us. But until next time, guys, as always, be safe and have a good day.